Good morning, everyone. Um, my name is Jovana Radovic Bartolucci. I'm acting legal manager for Sen and Senelec, and I will be uh, talking today about legal issues in the standards development process. As you know, we have um, many technical committees acting for Sen or Senelec. And uh, currently, there are around 400 uh, technical committees that are active, out of which 320 SEN, around 60 SENALEC, and some 20 uh, joint committees that tackle various. This can then be, of course, uh, divided in working groups. And we have something around uh, 1,800 working groups that are active uh, at this very moment. For SEN, um, we have uh, fields of work that I have uh, put on the left side of the screen and uh, Senelec uh, on the right side. As you can see, um, for SEN, we have um, some more traditional uh, fields such as construction um, field of work or um, healthcare, uh, consumer products, chemicals, or transport. We have also some others that are more um, in the field of accessibility. Then we have technical committees in air and space. Uh, we have technical committees for defense security or privacy issues. Energy, of course, a very important field as well food and feed, health and safety. Uh, we also have uh, technical committees for ICT, a very uh, um, popular and also innovation management. We have nanotechnology, pressure equipment, uh, smart living, uh, etc. cetera. Um, on the Senelec side, we have uh, technical committees for electric vehicles, electromagnetic compatibility, fiber optic communications. We have a TC for um, fuel cells, um, household appliances. As you can see, some um, fields of work are overlapping, such as ICT or smart housing. And in this case, we can uh, also sometimes decide to have joint um, TCs. Then for Senelec, we have a TC for medical equipment, interoperability, railways, uh, smart grids, etc. These are all uh, different uh, fields of work that we are currently active. And uh, today I would like to have uh, a little bit of uh, your attention on the word IPR. Um, as you know, IPR is a common um, term that we use for to refer to a number of distinct types of creations of the mind. Um, to these creations, uh, we have a temporary property rights that are provided by the law. And as any other property right, uh, we have, uh, we want to, to give a possibility to the right owner to raise some economic um, uh, right out of it, which is uh, why IP laws um, provide to owners a certain exclusive temporary rights to a variety of intangible assets. So in more practical terms, we're talking about musical, literature, arti artistic work, discoveries, inventions. All these creations of mind have uh, a possibility if the right owner uh, wishes so, to have a proper IPR protection. So in this case, we give rise to uh, IPRs that are uh, common types, uh, such as trademarks, uh, copyright, patent, design, uh, and also some rights that are maybe not registered or not disclosed, such as trade secrets. I would like to um, give you a, a very illustrative example of uh, IPRs. This is, as you all recognize, a Coca-Cola bottle. 
uh, refreshment drink that is very popular since 1886. And uh, a very good example to show to, to show which kinds of copyrights or patents or trademarks or other IPRs can be uh, protected under one single product. So we will start with uh, copyright. As you know, somebody needed to design this bottle, to draw it, to, to draw a logo of this. I will use my mouse to this, uh, to this uh, particular logo of the Coca-Cola name, as well as um, if you all remember an advertising that is very uh, known, all these uh, particular rights give rise to copyright. Then we can talk about the design of the bottle that is particular. If you remember, there are sometimes lines on it or uh, little dots. This is uh, protectable under uh, industrial design. Coca-Cola has also registered various uh, different types of uh, trademarks on this uh, product. Uh, it can be a word mark. It can it will uh, such a particular uh, logo or device of uh, Coca-Cola name. These are all registered under trademarks. Of course, one um, trademark owner can decide to register various types of trademark. So uh, it can be something like 30 different or 50 different uh, trademark registrations for just one uh, name, Coca-Cola. Um, then uh, Coca-Cola has also patented certain uh, different mechanisms uh, for this uh, product. Um, for example, the particular opener of the bottle is patented, so it's uh, patent cap, the way uh, the bottle is opened, as well as, for example, a particular method for making plastic containers. So um, there are many patents on this product as well. Finally, um, as uh, we all probably uh, know, uh, this magic drink has not been patented. So the formula of creating the drink Coca-Cola has never been uh, disclosed because the company has decided to keep it secret, in which case we talk about trade secret. Trade secret is a particular a uh, situation where the owner decides not to patent uh, this because they decide to keep it secret and they have to show that uh, they take extra measures to keep the secrecy stronger than usually it should take. And um, so this, this is only disclosed to a certain number of employees that have, of course, a very, very um, dif difficult um, contract uh, clauses to deal with in this sense. All right, so I would like to um, start by uh, giving you a brief uh, definition of the major, main, uh, or more most common IP uh, rights. Here we will start first with patent rights. A patent is an invention that is novel, inventive, has industrial applicability and is lawful. I have underlined the important words. Novel means that this invention has to be new, therefore not uh, made by anybody else in, in the past. It has to be inventive. Therefore, it means that it has this mechanism or procedure or um, has never been uh, invented before. And it has also, uh, it shows a particular uh, new um, mechanism or procedure. It has to have an applicability, so it has to be uh, used in, in an industrial means. And of course, uh, it has to be according to the law, lawful. The patent has to be, um, the patent is providing an exclusive right uh, that is, however, li limited in time, according to different jurisdictions. In Belgium, we talk about protection for 20 years. 
uh, starting from the filing date. Um, as I mentioned in the Coca-Cola uh, case patent, some patent owners uh, may decide not to disclose uh, their patent uh, invention. And uh, therefore they, they decide to keep it as a trade secret. Um, you may ask yourself, why would somebody want to keep it secret? Well, if uh, they have decided to uh, not to disclose it, for they can decide that for various reasons. For example, uh, first of all, patent uh, processes are rather um, expensive. A registration is uh, rather expensive and uh, long. Um, patent owners, uh, after 20 years, do not enjoy anymore their exclusive rights. Therefore, uh, the trade secret may be a better path for them in case they want to keep their secrecy longer. Um, the second uh, big and important IPR is copyright. Copyright is somehow particular because um, it protects original and tangible uh, piece of art, artistic, dramatic, uh, literature, musical, etc. Um, I have underlined again the important uh, words, so it has to be original uh, and it has to be tangible. Original means that um, it cannot be uh, a copy or sim too similar to uh, some previous piece of art already disclosed in, and it has to be tangible, meaning that if somebody has, for example, an idea of a new novel that he would like to uh, publish, this idea is not uh, copyright protectable as long as it is uh, in, in the mind of the author. As soon as it gets materialized, it becomes tangible and therefore it can be uh, published and protected as copyright. However, um, copyrights are not registered rights. Um, usually in the IPR world, we have uh, an office uh, that is uh, either regional or uh, just uh, depending on the, on the country, it can be uh, an, uh, an office, uh, for example, Belgian uh, trademark office or our Benelux trademark office that registers uh, trademarks or um, patent office that registers patents. We don't have such institutions for copyrights because copyrights are not registered rights, um, which makes the life of lawyers a bit more difficult because in case of a dispute, we need to show that um, the author of the copyright is the, this person. And for example, if there is a dispute on, on the authorship, then um, it, uh, it becomes a bit more complicated uh, comparing to a situation where uh, a register right has been provided in a certain office. However, of course, um, copyright can be uh, shown, uh, for example, Notary Public can have um, uh, their authorization that um, copyright uh, has been um, made public, etc. So there are ways to show that uh, to, to secure the copyrights, uh, although there is no uh, certificate of copyright authorship. Uh, copyright is limited in time as well for a lifetime of the author, as well as 70 years after his death. Um, Copyright is also particular because we have two major uh, um, groups of rights. Uh, we can talk about economic rights and of moral rights. In the, um, in the sense that economic rights are the rights that give rise to the author to um, get uh, compensation, monetary compensation for his right. And, uh, the rights that are <clears throat> uh, economic rights are reproduction rights, distribution rights, rights to uh, adaptation of their um, uh, 
copyrighted uh, material, the right to translate it, the right to uh, decide to publicly exhibit it, and the right to use the legal notice. So these are all um, economic rights that are um, reserved for the author. Um, in this sense, we have some exceptions, for example, um, right to quote, anybody can, uh, of course, quote uh, the author, or uh, to use parts for scientific or educational purposes under certain uh, conditions. And then we have moral rights that are rights that are cannot be separated from the author. These moral rights are um, right of publication, right to be recognized as the author, and integrity right, which means uh, right to have their work respected. These moral rights cannot be uh, transmitted to um, any other person, whereas economic right, uh, yes, uh, can be. Um, decided. Uh, if the author decides, he can decide to um, uh, license uh, his copyright, for example, uh, and this is uh, his, in his own um, discretion. Um, another important type of IPR are trademarks. Uh, trademarks are used to identify and distinguish the source of origin. Um, they are a monopoly right and give right uh, to exclusivity to the trademark owner. Um, trademarks, as you can see, I have illustrated some well-known marks here, can be registered um, as word mark, Nike, as a device, uh, the famous little Nike device or a combination like these marks here, uh, word and logo. They can be registered in color or black and white. There are various types of registrations and the trademark owners decide on these uh, types of registrations to make sure that they have uh, properly uh, safeguarded their monopoly right. Um, because as you um, can imagine, uh, the more you uh, secure your right, uh, of course, uh, the better it is because the trademarks prevent from passing off their goods as those of other peoples, uh, as well as from confusing on the market if somebody would register a similar crocodile uh, logo with a word mark, La Lost, that would, of course, give rise to a confusion on the market. Uh, trademarks are very useful uh, means of protection because they are registered for a very long period of 10 years, can be renewed indefinitely, and uh, in addition are rather uh, a low cost uh, for a trademark owner because the registration fees are not very high. Right, so um, now I would like to focus more on the standardization uh, world and how do we fit our IPRs um, into the standardization work of every day. Uh, in particular, I would like to address questions like who enjoys the copyright in European standards? What do we have to do when uh, patents uh, are relevant in the standardization work. Um, competition law can also be important at technical level. Um, as you know, GDPR implementation uh, is also a big um, issue and I would like to um, explain how we deal with it at SEN and Senelec. And finally, uh, a few words on trademarks and how do we protect our own trademarks. Right, we will start with um, copyrights. Um, I would like to explain how do we establish the claim and how do we deal with uh, economic rights that I mentioned previously. Um, in Senate and Alec, we have um, a list of guides that you may have heard of. These are um, dealing with certain topics and a guide 10 
is dealing with um, copyright policies. It explains the dissemination of uh, copyright and how um, the system works. Uh, as you may uh, remember, I mentioned that um, we have the possibility to uh, transmit the economic rights. And um, in an everyday of a TC, we have uh, a group of experts that meet uh, on a regular basis and spend their time on drafting um, a standard or another deliverable, but we will, let's focus on standards today. And um, these experts uh, use their knowledge, their experience to draft uh, a standard that will be then published. Therefore, uh, there is a copyright in this work. Um, what we want to ensure is that each of these individual contributions done by our experts are uh, immediately ensured uh, that the copyright is uh, transmitted to Sen and Senelec. Therefore, the ownership will be um, at Sen and Senelec who will then uh, decide to uh, pass the exploitation rights on to uh, national standardization bodies and national committees in their own countries. So this is uh, the system. And we have also a joint commercial advisory group, JCAG, that is uh, a common group that Sen and Senelec that decides on uh, particular matters uh, related to these disseminations, such as, for example, license uh, agreements, um, exploitation rights uh, given to other third uh, organization or persons, etc. Any um, more particular matter is decided uh, commonly. Um, Therefore, uh, an expert that is contributing in a TC or in a working group uh, must uh, transfer to SEN or SENELEC uh, the copyright on the content, content, individual contribution that he or she produces. This is called assignment of rights statements and is signed at every meeting. Um, of course, any of these experts still enjoy moral rights as this cannot be uh, transmitted and they have their personal identifiable contributions that are always protected. But we want to make sure that the economic rights are uh, handled at the level of the organization. This is why the first message is that everyone has to sign the attendance list and the statements at the occasion of every meeting. Um, However, if uh, an individual that is not a permanent participant in a TC uh, has not signed the exploitation rights statements, or uh, if, for example, a TC wishes to use um, content owned by another individual or organization, then we need to uh, ensure that exploitation rights license agreement is signed and um, there is a a procedure for this. Uh, so basically, uh, we need to contact the IPR owner to complete this uh, ERLA, Exploitation Rights License Agreement. Uh, the PM responsible should be involved and he has to make sure that the uh, ERLA is completed with all the necessary information. He, um, the IPR owner then needs to sign and send it back by post and by email to CCMC. Right, so um, uh, regarding patent rights, um, you may ask yourself why are patent rights important? Well, when we um, are in the process of drafting uh, a standard, especially in the case of technical um, standards, very technical, uh, we can um, often have a situation when uh, some technology 
that is requested to be implemented in a technical standard is actually a patented technology. In this case, um, we need to deal with, with uh, patents. These patents are called Standard Essential Patent, SEP. And uh, there is a very particular, and uh, there is a procedure that is um, described in guide eight. This is, these are the guidelines for implementation of uh, IPR policy on patents. Uh, what do we have to do when we have uh, this kind of situation? CCMC um, is uh, requesting uh, early disclosure as early as possible uh, of patent rights. So in the case of a technical uh, committee that might potentially be uh, in this situation, uh, patent uh, holders are required to disclose as early as possible so that uh, the TC can um, take this into consideration. Uh, the chair conveners ask at every meeting whether there is any disclosure of patent rights and uh, encourage the owners of patents to disclose this. Um, technical group does not proceed determine if this essential scope or validity of patent, uh, but can discuss about the relevance, which means that uh, they can decide whether this standard essential patent is absolutely relevant for the standard drafting or can be uh, decided to just not take into account this technology and to use another path for drafting the standard. A patent holder is advised to uh, complete um, a declaration where he has to say what is his preference, whether he wants to disclose the patent free of charge, which is advised, whether he wants to licenses, license it, um, but he has to license under front conditions. Um, there is um, a court uh, decision that requires that uh, standard essential patents um, for the standardization purposes needs to be um, licensed only under fair, reasonable, and non-discriminatory terms, which are called friend terms. Um, or he may also decide not to disclose the patent technology. In, the, uh, in this case, not he does not want to license. Uh, and uh, therefore the TC needs to find another solution to draft this uh, standard. Um, therefore they need to consider uh, technical, other technical uh, solutions, right? Um, therefore uh, in practical terms, uh, we need to, uh, you need to ask uh, the, patent attorney, uh, the patent owner to fill in the declaration form which is provided in guide eight, annex two. Um, the PEM responsible needs to ensure the declaration is completed and contains all the necessary information. And then ensure that patent owner has signed and sent by post and by email the declaration to uh, CCMC. Right. Um, now a few words about uh, Sen and Senalec trademarks. Uh, as you can see here, we have a Senelec logo that uses this particular and um, shape. We have Sen logo uh, in this blue square. And we also have a logo that combines two organization in case for joint um, representation. These all trademarks are owned by Sen and Senelec. Uh, but uh, our members are uh, requested to make sure that the trademarks are used uh, correctly in their own territories and uh, to be vigilant in case of any misuse or violation of use, infringement of trademarks, in which case they need to uh, inform the CCMC and uh, we, have, we have to work together to prevent any such uh, misuse. 
of course, members can um, use the trademarks in their territories. And uh, I would also like to mention the guide 24 in this case that deals with uh, trademarks. Another guide that is uh, that I'm going to mention today is the guide 31. Uh, and this guide uh, give, provides guidelines about competition law. Um, as you know, um, the experts uh, often are in real world uh, working in companies that may have um, their own interests. And we want to ensure that the work provided in, in the TC is neutral. Uh, we want to make sure that there is no anti-competitive behavior. Uh, which is, of course, pro prohibited by the law, even if it's unintentional. Therefore, uh, the Guide 31 will provide all the do's and don'ts, uh, what do, what, which kind of behavior is acceptable and which is not. So I invite you to go through this uh, when you have a moment and just inform yourself about um, what do we... Uh, want uh, to make sure in our thesis are uh, acceptable and which kind of behavior is not. But in case of any doubt, uh, of course, you may always contact me. And now a few words about um, our data protection compliance system. Um, we have three fold uh, processes that um, uh, are in place. We need to make sure uh, that our internal rules and processes uh, are compliant with the with the GDPR. We also have um, the Sen and Senelec external providers that assist us in our work. Therefore, we have to process the personal data uh, in this respect as well. And we have uh, a big, as you know, amount of work is the TCs and handling the personal data within these meetings. Uh, all the data protection principles, policies are uh, transposed in our internal procedures and processes that are um, carefully monitored and um, we make sure that they're always compliant with the recent case law and uh, rules. Um, and of course, um, in case of any questions, again, you can contact me because I am also the data protection person um, internally. So um, here is a little bit of um, explanation how it works. The personal data, experts data of Sen and Senelec members can also um, be circulated with uh, international organizations. As you know, Sen works with ISO and Senelec works with IEC, and they're all the uh, global directories, e-committees, uh, participation uh, tools, collaboration, etc. cetera. Um, these data are also circulated with Sen and Senelec. Um, then we have data of, of partners, liaisons, and other experts. So all these uh, data are Careful, there is a flux of data that are carefully um, watched and uh, we make sure that all these uh, flux of data are made in accordance with the GDPR rules. Um, therefore, we have database online tools and websites that are um, consent box, cookies policy, data protection and privacy statement that are all implemented. Um, another guide that I will mention today, and I promise is the last one, it's the guide 37 that is currently not yet published. We need to have it approved by our um, uh, General Assembly. And this is um, the guide on common policies for data protection, and it will be soon published. Um, with with regards to international organizations, we have signed uh, standard contractual clauses, which are uh, contracts that are approved by the commission and they're uh, adjusted. So to make sure that the 
flux of data and responsibilities are made in uh, accordance with our European uh, GDPR. Um, with regards to external providers, we have contracts that are signed and we always make sure that, um, again, uh, GDPR and um, flux of data are carefully ensured, um, for example, with Zoom and other uh, providers. Um, we often uh, provide uh, trainings uh, at requests if there is a, a concrete request. But anyways, the data protection contact person is um, myself. So for any questions, you can always revert to me. This is in brief um, IPR in standardization world. And I thank you for your attention. And I invite you to ask any questions you may have after this session, you can send by email. Thank you very much and have a nice day.